Likewise, we have that which occurred to Muhammad bin Sirin, and he is Muhammad bin Sirin al Ansari. His kunya was Abu Bakr bin Abi Amra. He was Basri from Basra, thika, trustworthy, precise, abid, and a man who had a high station, a high station and a high rank amongst the people of knowledge. And the people of Ilm. And he was from the Tabi'een. And he died in the year 110. After the Hijra. So. It is mentioned that two men entered upon. Muhammad bin Sirin. And they were people of desires. Rajulan. Min ahlil ahwa. They were two men. From the people of innovation and desires. So. One of them he said. Ya Abu Bakr, O oh, 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 Abu Bakr, that was his kunya, Muhammad ibn Sirin's kunya, Abu Bakr. They said, we, win, we, we wish to have a word with you. We wish to speak to you. He said, La, I will not. He said, La, I will not speak to you. So they said to him, Then we shall recite upon you an ayah from the book of Allah. He said, La, no. Either you will get up and leave me or I will get up and go. So they both stood and they left. After that, some of the people, they said, Oh, Abu Bakr, what, would have, what harm would it have done if they recited to you some ayat from the book of Allah? So he said, Indeed, I fear that they would recite to me an ayah and they would distort it and then that would settle in my heart. This is Muhammad bin Sirin, my brothers and my sisters, an imam of the sunnah who is informing us and informing his students and informing the believers that I will not speak to them. I will not listen to a word that they've got to say. Why did Muhammad ibn Sirin say that? Because we don't debate over the aqidah. You want the aqidah? The aqidah is known. Just like today, a person says, okay, I'll, deb I'll debate with you over Qadr. Say, you don't have to debate with me over Qadr, akhi. Go and read the book of Ibn Uthaymin or the Risala of Ibn Uthaymin and Qadr wal Qadr. Ya akhi, I want to debate with you about the names and attributes of Allah. Say, I'm not debating with you. You want to know about the names and attributes of Allah? Go and read Aqidatul Wasitiyah of Shaykh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Or go and read the books of Imam al Darimi. Or go and read the books of Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Usul Sunnah. Go and read them. Go and read what the Salaf used to say about the Aqidah. I will not debate with you. Because you are not asking me a question. You want to debate. You want to prove. That your ash'ariya or your tajahum, your denial of the names and attributes of Allah, you're distorting the names and attributes of Allah, you're making ta'wil of the names and attributes of Allah, falsely interpreting them. You want to convince me that that is the path that is correct. And I will not debate with you, with you on that. Just like I will not debate with the Qaburi. He says, I want to debate with you over whether you can make tawaf around the grave. What am I going to debate with you on that for? For what purpose? Prophet ﷺ didn't do it. I don't need to debate with you about it. He didn't do it. The Sahaba didn't do it. Why am I going to debate with you about making tawaf around the grave of a person? For what purpose? And then do it on video, on YouTube. And then you upload it and say that I debated, you know, a Qaburi who was making sajda at the grave. Why am I going to debate him for? What is there confusing about that? I will not debate with you, Mubtadi'a. The Prophet ﷺ didn't do it. The Sahaba didn't do it. Wabas. That's all I need to know. So I would rather have apes and pigs as neighbors than have the, the likes of the Rafida or the Khawarij or the Jahmiya as neighbors. This is how the Salaf would speak. 
Look at Muhammad ibn Sirin. Why am I going to debate with the Qadari? For what purpose? You want to know about Qada and Qadar? Go and read the books of the Salaf on Qada and Qadar. Go and see what Ibn Taymiyyah said from the, from the Middle Ages. Go and see what the scholars before them said like Imam Ahmad in Usul Sunnah or Barbahari in Sharh Sunnah or Lalakai in Sharh Usul Ittiqat. Go and see what the likes of Al Marwazi said. Go and see what Imam al Sabuni said, Rahimahullah. This is our aqeedah. I don't need to debate with you over it. If you want to learn, that's different. I'll give you a book. Or I'll inform you this is our belief with regard to the qadr of Allah. This is our belief with regard to iman, increases and decreases. Belief in the heart, speech upon the tongue, actions of the limbs. This is our belief, names and attributes of Allah. We affirm for Allah that which Allah has affirmed for himself. Without ta'teel, without tahrif, without tamthil, without taqyif, without, without associating or, or uh, uh, resembling Allah to his creation, no likeness to Allah, without saying how, without negating from Allah his attributes and without distorting them or falsely interpreting them. This is what we believe about the attributes of Allah. Take any attribute and this is what we apply to it. We affirm for Allah that Allah ascends. We affirm for Allah that Allah descends. We affirm for Allah that Allah has feet. We affirm for Allah that Allah has hands. We affirm for Allah that Allah has a face. We affirm for Allah that he has two eyes. We affirm for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will come yawm al-qiyamah. We affirm for Allah that Allah laughs. We affirm all of this for Allah without denying it, without negating it, without ta'teel, without tahrif, explaining it away. Oh, it is not Allah that descends in the last third of the night. As the, uh, Rather, it is the mercy of Allah as the Ash'aris and those innovators, they say. No, we say Allah descends. But, so we affirm the descent of Allah and we do not distort it. And interpret it to mean something else. Or oh, it's Allah's angels that descend. Or oh, it's Allah's mercy that descends. No, Allah descends himself. The nuzul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the atiyah. That Allah himself descends. And we do not make taqif. We do not say how Allah's attributes are. We don't say how he descends. Barakallahu feekum. We don't know how because the kayfiyah, he didn't tell us. Just like Imam Malik said, al kayf majhul. We don't know. It is unknown how Allah descends or how Allah ascends. And without tamthil, without likening Allah's attributes to his creation. This is the belief of Ahlu Sunnah. You want to come and debate that? Go and debate by yourself. Somewhere else with the jinn or with the devils that are whispering to you. I will not debate with you. Either you will get up and leave or I will get up and leave. This is Ahlu Sunnah, the Aqeedah of Ahlu Sunnah with regard to Ahlul Bid'ah. Also we have that statement of Abdul Razzaq. And he is Abdul Razzaq bin Hammam. Abdul Razzaq bin Hammam. Bin Nafi' al-San'ani, famously known as Abdul Razak al-San'ani, rahimahullah. Al-Humayri, al-Yamani. His kunya was Abu Bakr. He was a muhaddith, a hafiz, a faqih. He was, uh, an, uh, an Imam al-Bukhari took from him, as did many other scholars. He was born in the year 160, 126. And he died in the year 211. Imam, Imam Ahmed, of course, traveled to him, to Sana'a. Rahimahullah, and he died at the age of 85. And he has many books. And from them, Sunan, Fil Fiqh. He also has Al Maghazi, a book on battles, Tafsir, tafsir of the Quran, Jami Al Kabir, Fil Hadith, and other than that, from the books. So Abdul Razak, he said that Ibrahim bin Muhammad ibn Abi Yahya 
And this Ibrahim bin Muhammad bin Abi Yahya al-Aslami, his kunya was Abu Ishaq al-Madani. Then he was abandoned. His narrations were abandoned. And he died in the year. It is said uh, 184 or 191. Now, so Abdul Razak said that Ibrahim bin Muhammad bin Abi Yahya said to me, he said to me, in your land, I have seen that in your land, there are many, many Mu'tazila, meaning this group of Ahlul Bidah, the Mu'tazila. So I said to him, yes. And those Mu'tazila, they say that you are from them, Ibrahim bin Muhammad. That you are from them. So then he said to me, Will you not enter alongside me into this uh, into this uh, building like a shop or a, a place that we can sit down so that I can talk to you? So Abdul Razak said to him, No. He said, Why not? Why will you not talk to me? And why will you not sit with me? He said, Because the hearts are weak. And the religion is not is not based on who can overpower the other. Reported by Ibn Batta in Al Ibanatul Kubra, in the chapter that we have already mentioned before, the chapter of keeping companionship with the people who cause sickness in the hearts and corrupt a person's iman, and likewise Al Lalikai in the chapter heading that we previously mentioned. And also we have the statement of Mubashir. Bin Ismail Al Halabi, and he is Mubashir Ibn Ismail Al Halabi Abu Ismail, and he is Al Kalbi, and he is from the uh, he is their freed slave, and he is truthful, Suduq in narrating hadith, and he died in the year two hundred. He died in the year two hundred. He said. It was said to Imam al-Awza'i and you all know Imam al-Awza'i and as for Imam al-Awza'i then he is Abdul Rahman bin Amr bin Abi Amr al-Awza'i Abu Amr and he was a faqih a jurist a great scholar thiqa trustworthy and he died in the year 157 after the Hijra. So Mubashir bin Ismail al Halabi, he said, he was said to Imam al Awza'i, he said, There is a man who says, I will sit with Ahlul Sunnah and with Ahlul Bid'ah. So Imam al Awza'i said, This man wishes to bring together the truth and falsehood. He wishes to bring together the truth and falsehood. Collected by Ibn Batta in Al-Ibanatul Kubra. So here, my brothers and sisters, in all of that which we have mentioned, in all of that which we have mentioned, you see the clear position of the Salaf. Clear position of the Salaf with respect to Ahlul Bid'ah. And that's why we say that even in these times, if a person truly wants to follow the path of the Salaf, then he does not give up this part of his belief, this part of the usul of the deen, which is that we do not sit or debate or participate in conferences or attend the conferences and gatherings of Ahlul Bidah, regardless of who they are. And Abu Aliya, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, the great Tabi'i, who died in the year 90 after the Hijrah, he said, Ta'allamul Islam. He said, Go and learn Islam. And when you have learnt Islam, then don't turn away from it. Alaykum bi siratil mustaqim. And upon you is to stay upon the straight path. For indeed, fa innahul Islam. For indeed, that is Islam. And do not deviate from Islam neither to the right nor to the left. Wa alaykum bi sunnati nabiyyikum. And upon you is the sunnah of your prophet. And that which the sahaba were upon, radiallahu anhum, 
وإياكم وهذه الأهواء and keep away from these أهواء from these desires that when these desires that they are thrown amongst the people that they are cast that when they are cast into the people it causes enmity and hatred between them and likewise Al Marwazi in a Sunnah and Imam Al Ajuri in a Sharia. And Imam Al Awza'i Rahimahullah Ta'ala he said, Isbir nafsaka ala Sunnah. Again, you know the importance, my brothers and sisters, of being patient upon the Sunnah. In a time when you look around you and you think about the environment that you live in. And you see that most of the people are astray. Either they're Tablighi, or Ikhwani, or Brailwi, or Sahawardi, or Naqshbandi, or Murji'i, or sorry, Murji, or that he's Khariji. You know, he's upon the ideas of those terrorists and extremists. Everywhere you look around you, that's what you see. So, what does the Sunni Salafi do in that situation? You take this advice of Imam al awzai Isbir nafsaka ala sunnah. Be patient and keep yourself patient upon the sunnah. Waqif haythu waqaf al qawm. And stop where the people before you stopped. Waqul bima qalu. And speak with what they spoke with. And withhold from what they withheld from. And take to the path وَسْلُكْ سَبِيلَ سَلِفِكَ الصَّالِحِ And take to the path of your righteous predecessors, the Salaf. For indeed that which suffice them will suffice you. And what suffice them? These points that Imam Ahmed has mentioned and that which we have mentioned today. This statement of Imam Al-Awza'i collected by Imam Al-Lalakain Sharh Usul Itiqad Ahli Sunnati Wal Jama'ah and likewise it is mentioned also by uh, Ibn Jawzi in Talbis Iblis and likewise uh, Imam Al-Ajuri in Al-Shari'a and also Abu Nu'aym in Al-Hilya This is our manhaj whoever likes it they like it whoever doesn't like it we don't care we don't care why? because the haqq is the way of the Salaf. As Imam Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, the Imam and great scholar said, La Aiba ala man adhara madhab as Salaf. That there is no Christian upon the one who makes apparent the madhab, the belief, and the methodology of the Salaf. No criticism upon him whatsoever. Because he mentions at the end of that sentence, because the madhab of the Salaf is nothing but the truth. That's the madhab of the Salaf. If they take to it, it is better for them. If they abandon it, then it is destruction for them. Because the madhab of the Salaf is like the Ark of Noah. As one of the Salaf said, Imam Malik, that the Sunnah is like the Ark of Noah. The madhab of the Salaf, which encompasses the Sunnah, which follows the Sunnah, because that is the madhab of the Salaf. The madhab of the Salaf is the madhab of Sunnah. And Salafiya. It is the madhab and the it is the, the, the aqidah and the methodology of the kitab and the sunnah. So whomsoever abandons the madhab of the salaf, then he is drowned and he is destroyed. And whomsoever holds on to the madhab of the salaf, then he is upon success and salvation. Barakallahu feekum. And upon that we'll finish for today. وسبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك و...